I know. You read the title of this video and you're like, man, can this guy just stop talking about the Switch replacing the 3DS? And I get it. On the surface, the Switch replacing the 3DS is an old topic. We've covered it in the podcast. We've covered it in other conversations. Uh, and I, I want to actually turn this into a full-blown discussion. This isn't based on any news or any reports or any rumors. You know, like there was that one rumor a while back that, oh, in two years... Uh, the Switch is going to completely replace the 3DS. And we know that Nintendo has repeatedly said the Switch is not a replacement for 3DS. And obviously the biggest argument is if you fully believe the Switch is, is a home console that you can take on the go, which is what Nintendo has consistently advertised it as. So Nintendo's been pretty on par with their marketing. 3DS is its own thing. Uh, Switch is a portable, you know, console. So it's not the same thing. There could be a successor to 3DS someday. Yada, yada, yada. But I'm here today because I want to make it perfectly clear my stance and my reasoning behind why I think it is logical for this Switch to not only replace the 3DS, but that I feel most video game fans should want the Switch to replace the 3DS. And obviously the Switch has already replaced the Wii U, so that's a discussion for a different time. Although I know there's people who own the Wii U that are mad that uh, the Wii U promise never got fulfilled, they didn't get an exclusive Zelda game, they didn't get... Uh, the promise of what the gamepad's capabilities were fully delivered to them. And I'm sorry, that sucks. But that's in the past. And we can't keep living in the past. What we need to do is learn from the past mistakes to make a brighter tomorrow. And I feel like that's a great phrase when we're talking about the Switch, its potential, how well it's doing now, and why it should replace the 3DS. Because we need to look at the past, both successes and failures, and consider the future of the video game industry. Because we've been told for a long time, we've had the media, uh, we've even had certain video gamers just beating it into our head that video game consoles are going to die, that PCs are going to be the only thing that survive, or gaming on smartphones and tablets, which ironically the Switch is a tablet, but you know, setting that aside, you know, gaming on tablets and smart devices and uh, gaming PCs, which would always be around for, say, the, the more enthusiast crowd, uh, that likes to have like the better, best looking visuals and all that stuff. And for the most part, I understand the logic behind it. I understand why people think dedicated handheld gaming devices are dying out because, you know, this current generation, you know, with the Vita kind of tanking and, you know, the 3DS doing half the numbers of the DS and technically being less than the original Game Boy, I understand the sentiment that handheld gaming is dying out, even if the 3DS itself kind of proved the market is still pretty healthy for uh, a dedicated handheld device. Uh, there's a lot of misnomers about the direction of dedicated and handheld devices in that there's a market for it, but the market is mostly with kids, right? And that's kind of how Nintendo's slowly shifting the 3DS. You know, they have the 2DS XL coming out, which the only reason the 2DS even exists in the first place, and of course I know the 2DS XL is already released, uh, is that it w Kids under six could not basically <laughs> use the 3D feature on the 3DS without potentially harming their eyes. So it, it's one of those ideals out there that the 2DS uh, exists for the sole purpose of children in the first place. And a lot of times when I see the 2DS, this doesn't mean that there aren't people that own, own a 2DS, 2DS XL that are teenagers, you know, young adults, even older adults. There, of course there are. There are people that don't give a crap about the, the 3D effect and they just want a, the cheapest possible uh, 3DS system they can get for the games. And there's plenty of hardcore games on the 3DS. So this isn't even about the library, although the library for the 3DS is extremely diverse, which includes children, older adults, teenagers, etc. There's a lot of games targeted at a lot of different markets. Uh, but that's also true if you look at smart device gaming. Uh, if you open up your phone and you go to the App Store, there's tons of stuff for games. There's also tons of things for teenagers and adults. Uh, the marketplace is just as diverse and getting more content on mobile devices than the 3DS has. And I preface this because obviously smart device gaming is different. Uh, I'm not going to call it casual because while it's true people buy phones for other reasons and then happen to play games on it, uh, whereas you buy a 3DS to play games and you might happen to watch Netflix or browse the internet on it, which I know that experience isn't very good, but it does have those capabilities. It, it's still, even as an aside, gaming on phones has grown and I felt like become legitimate. There are several indie games that come out on phones that are just as good as the indie games that come out on consoles. And we shouldn't dismiss them because maybe it's a, a free-to-try model, you know, a free-to-play model that's not really free-to-play uh, or has microtransactions. Because microtransactions exist in 
triple a game so we can't pretend like this doesn't permeate throughout the gaming industry so we have to sit back and think man you know pokemon go is not a traditional pokemon rpg but it, it is it just as much of a pokemon game as pokemon snap was i think so uh how about <laughs> you know even looking at nintendo again you know fire emblem heroes uh it is it's a tried and true game that's existed on phones before and it's no it's not a full-fledged fire emblem game but it's just as much of of a fire emblem game as any other side dish fire emblem game on any other platform would be i'd argue it's more of a fire emblem game than fire emblem warriors is going to be uh, so it's it's just a roundabout cycle where I feel like we need to dismiss the fact that first off, the smart devices are not viable gaming platforms. Then we get into the Switch. And we look at the history of Nintendo. Nintendo has almost always had two platforms. They launched the NES and then, you know, like a year later, the Game Boy or so. And that's fantastic. Nintendo is always extremely like their handheld systems have always been their best sellers so to get rid of a common misconception oh nintendo's just you know the switch is just going to this handheld route because uh they can't sell consoles well their handhelds have always been massively more popular you know that's just the way it's always been home consoles have never been as popular as handheld gaming period end of story all the facts in the world back this up but Nintendo's approach has also come to the point where they have driven away a lot of third-party developers. It's a reality. We have to accept it. I realize there's third-party developers supporting Switch, some at least. I realize that it, there's tons of indie support and we're getting high-quality games. The Switch is fantastic. I realize we had high-quality games on the Wii U. I realize that we've had some decent third-party support, even on 3DS. I understand that Nintendo has still got some support in the industry because there's still a market for games on Nintendo platforms for people that aren't Nintendo. But we also have to recognize that the market for third-party games on Nintendo has shrunk, at least at the AAA level. Uh, we're, we're not getting Grand Theft Auto V, at least not now. We're not getting Dishonored 2. We're not getting all these other AAA games, Assassin's Creed Origins. We don't, we don't even have Call of Duty this year. And some of these games might come over time, but right now, uh, Nintendo doesn't get these games. So Nintendo is stuck in this thing where... A majority of the reason that people are going to buy a 3DS, that people are going to buy a Switch, are for Nintendo's own content. And I'm of mind in 2017, heading into 2018 coming up, that Nintendo can't afford business-wise, well, they can't afford it technically, but afford it for the future of the company, to continue to split their development on two different platforms. And we even see this with 3DS, where a lot of the games coming out for 3DS moving forward are not first-party developed. They're second-party, third-party, etc. Uh, Nintendo's not putting their A-teams, it seems like, on 3DS games right now, beyond Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. But again, that's not even a first-party company. Game Freak is a second-party company, and they, they kind of live in their own bubble and do their own thing, and Nintendo just nods their head because they keep selling 10-plus million units of every game they release, period. Uh, at least when it comes to Pokemon. So, moving forward... I think it's smart for Nintendo to bring all of their development teams together and focus on a singular platform. And the Switch is the, almost the perfect platform to do this with because even if you think it's a home console you can take on the go, it's still a portable gaming device that also doubles as a home console. So there's no reason to not have all of your games come to it. I mean, there's people out there that want the entire 3DS library ported to the Switch. And I understand that desire because it's a portable system. And for once, we can have a singular ecosystem of Nintendo systems that fits both crowds of gamers, both those that want to play with it underneath their TV and those that want to take it on the go. Now, the one caveat is, all, is that I feel like if they really want this to focus on under the TV, they should pack in a Pro Controller with it just my opinion. I realize they pack in a grip for the Joy-Cons, and it works fine. But I think for more traditional home console gamers, they're going to see that as kind of a lackadaisical solution and maybe not ideal, and they're going to feel like they need to churn out $70 more for the Pro Controller. So if they just include that in the box, I think that would, you know, and maybe they'll have bundles in the future that do that. I doubt it. They've never done it before. But, you know, there's, there's always hope. But setting that aside... The Switches obviously have a lot of momentum right now, right? You know, Breath of the Wild kicked it off the right way. 1-2 Switch ended up selling well. You know, launch games tend to usually sell pretty decent because there's nothing else to play on the platform. So, of course, you're going to buy the launch games, you know? Uh, we know that Bomberman sold really well at launch. We know that uh, ARMS has at least had a very good start. We don't know how the sales have continued since, but $1.2 million for a brand-new fighting game franchise, you know, when a franchise like Street Fighter V could only sell $1.7 to date is uh, impressive. 
And then you have to consider, we don't even have Smash out yet. Uh, we have Pokken Tournament coming, which again, who knows how well that's going to sell in comparison to the original. But Mario Kart, you know, 8 Deluxe came out. And, you know, <laughs> Splatoon 2 has been selling phenomenally well. Uh, even third-party games, the few that have released, have been selling pretty well. Uh, the reason that we know about all the issues in Troll and I is because people have been buying Troll and I uh, because they want more to play on Switch and they're hungry for content and these are the content being delivered to them and for the most part it's been pretty good. I think Troll and I is the first legit indie game to release that really isn't that good. Even Overcooked with its frame rate issues when it released uh, was still a really decent game uh, if you played it in a multiplayer setting whereas Troll and I just kind of feels like a letdown. Now we just had Sonic Mania come out. Sonic Mania is fantastic. It's a multi-platform game new take on classic sonic amazing 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 so many great reviews for that game and when you encapsulate this in a bubble it feels like the switch uh while it's already beating out 3ds sales for this year uh since it released it it's one of those aspects where i realize it has some pitfalls to reach that it should be everything device. I realize that the plastic screen is easy to scratch, but then they didn't go with the glass screen because they didn't want kids cracking it. Uh, I realize the Joy-Cons can be too small, easy to lose, uh, even with the Finder on the, <laughs> you know, your, your Joy-Con has to be charged for the Finder on the system to work to even buzz your Joy-Con to find it. It's, it's just a, a, a system that isn't perfect. And if we think about... Uh, the 3DS itself, I mean, it's like, oh, it's perfect for kids. The 3DS isn't perfect for kids. For starters, we have the whole issue with the 3D hurting the eyes. Two, those hinges have always been an issue with kids. I've seen so many kids snap their 3DS hinges. It's not even funny. Uh, the clamshell design is great for putting in your pocket, and admittedly, the Switch isn't this kind of thing you put in your pocket. But when I see kids playing 3DS... I rarely see them put it in their pocket anymore. It's always in their backpack, in a bag they're carrying. Uh, we live in a society now where it's become normal to have some extra carrying thing with you, uh, whether it's a backpack or whatever. And, you know, back in the day, it used to be fanny packs. <laughs> I don't think those have really made a full comeback. But uh, it's become normal, and obviously some people have really oversized pockets. But I, I see people carrying on bags all the time, and that's where they're putting their portable devices. I mean, maybe not their phones, so they'll still go in the pocket. But again, I think phones are kind of built for the pocket. Uh, portable gaming devices don't need to be something you put in your pocket. I mean, the original portable gaming devices way back in the day weren't things you would put in your pocket anyways because you could break the levers on them and all this stuff because uh, everything was mechanical. There wasn't all no digital so we're at a point now where all of nintendo's efforts should be fully concentrated in my opinion on the switch they should phase out the 3ds which i think they're already doing personally but even if you don't think they are i feel like nintendo should be doing that because if they focus all of their first party development th you know teams and second party teams on switch you're going to have a platform that has an extremely robust lineup without including third-party indie games. So now you're going to have a system that has all of Nintendo's best games in one place. I mean, we're getting a Pokemon RPG on it, for crying out loud. Uh, you put all these games on Switch, and that's going to blow it up even more than it already is. You're talking about $70 million for 3DS. Well, imagine that all of Nintendo's output is on Switch. All of the people that care about any of Nintendo's games are going to buy a Switch knowing full well they're actually going to get the content. Not just a promise of content because it's the only platform they support. When Nintendo is down to a single platform like Sony and Xbox are, uh, you start to see a higher game output because they're not splitting their development teams over two separate devices. So... And the Switch is perfect for this. As I said, it satisfies handheld, not entirely. I understand there's some pitfalls, and it satisfies home console. Again, not entirely. There are some pitfalls, but these are the sacrifices you give for a hybrid device. And as Switch is proving with sales, people are okay with those sacrifices because they're still getting fantastic games that look great, that play well. Maybe it's not the highest resolution in the world, but again, Nintendo was right in 2006 when HD didn't matter yet. And they're right again now that 4K, while it's fantastic isn't necessarily uh, the correct direction here in 2017. Maybe by 2021. Maybe Switch 2 with an X2 in it needs to support 4K output. I don't know. 
But we're living in an age now where I feel like Nintendo is best putting everything on a single platform. And I feel like that's going to fix a lot of the issues Nintendo has had. You know, Wii U only sold 13 million. We add that 13 million to, to the 3DS, and now you're looking at you know a single platform that could have sold 85 million units or so. That's pretty good. And if you're talking about, uh, you know, some people say, oh, there's no way in heck the Switch could reach Wii numbers. Well, the one way you could do it is if it's the only platform Nintendo makes games for. If that's the case... Uh, there could be a huge convergence race. You know, you can get 80 to 100 million units on that system if that's the only way you're getting Nintendo games because that's how popular Nintendo games are. And the more install base there are, the more chances for third-party games to sell. And the fact that third parties have already seen success is also a good sign. Uh, everything's looking up and up for the Switch. And I know some people accuse my channel, oh, you just popped up doing the Switch. Era. Technically, this channel's been around like 10 years. But uh, just getting technical, I love the Switch. As critical as I am about certain aspects of it, about some of the game treatment, some of Nintendo's treatment of it, the Switch itself I think is brilliant. I think it is the future of Nintendo. Uh, I think they're going to ride the Switch hype train for a decade or more. I think there's going to be multiple versions. This is going to be the Game Boy. We're going to see uh, the new Nintendo Switch and the Switch 2 and the Switch Advance or the Super Nin Super Nintendo Switch or whatever Nintendo does. I think there's going to be like two or three generations of Switch before Nintendo tries to do something entirely new again. Uh, I'm excited by this prospect. I think this is the direction Nintendo absolutely needs to go in. I think it's the direction they are going in. But again, this is about the conversation. So let me know in the comments below what you think about it. Obviously, I'll pick out a comment to feature on Prime Comments and we'll have a conversation because... Uh, I don't want to trash the 3DS. I think it was a fantastic system that did better than I expected. But we are now in 2017. The system came out in 2011. Uh, and Nintendo has a, a, a portable system. I know it, it's also a home console, but it's a portable gaming system that can do everything the 3DS can do and then some. I realize it doesn't have dual screens. And they can make it work. It has a touch screen. They could figure out a way if they really want to use touch controls in a game. Anyways... I am Nathaniel Ruffle Jance from Nintendo Prime. If you like this video, you know what to do. If you dislike the video, hit that dislike button. Subscribe for more videos like this. And as always, folks, I will catch you in the next one.